Hallelujah. The Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is holy. Hallelujah. The Lord our God is glorious. Come on and bless him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. There is no God like you. You reign supreme and you reign alone. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your name is a strong tower. And I dropped the tower. The righteous one is And I say, God, we bless you. God, we praise you. God, we thank you for your name. We magnify your name, oh God. Hallelujah. You are the true and the living God. You are the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are God alone. You are God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we pray to be not just like you. Hallelujah. 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 You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in our lives. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for gracing us and blessing us. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everybody. We welcome you today in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be in the house of worship this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we greet all of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. We thank the Lord for your presence. Hallelujah. Most of all, we thank God for his presence. Uh, we're going to move into our scripture this morning, which is coming from Psalm 24. And following that, Sister Yvonne McFadden will come and lead us further into the presence of the Lord. Psalm 24, beginning at verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in this holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to idols or swear by what is, what is false. He will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from the God, from God of salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye, ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you, O God, in this place today. Father, we thank you for being our strength, Lord. Thank you for being our strong power. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. It reaches to me. You are. Straight. 
of the Lord, amen, to be able to join in and worship together. We know that these are, are some strange times, times that we must be cautious. However, when it, the Lord has opened the way for us to worship together, there's nothing like corporate worship, amen. Thank God for technology. But there's nothing like being together in the sanctuary. And I was just, I was just, as, as, as Sister Yvonne, Yvonne was, was ministering, I was just thinking about, you know, people who are not really rooted and grounded. You know, the people that are on the fringes, you know, they, 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 are, they say that they're Christians, and I, I'm not going to doubt their, their Christianity. Uh, but... They're just they're either young in the Lord, they're weak in their faith. And, you know, when this pandemic started, some of them have not darkened the door of the church since. And some don't even listen to the broadcast. And they find themselves just wasting away or waning away, getting weaker and weaker. And they wonder what's going on. You need the fellowship of believers. Yeah, you, you need you need to be in the sanctuary when you can, because you know this is this is.
so encouraging. It's so, so building. It's, it's strengthened us in so many ways. And if you miss the Sunday worship and, and, and corporate worship and you don't tune in to the broadcast and you don't attend the Bible study, then what else do you expect except for you to just fall away from the Lord? I just want to encourage those of you who are listening online this morning, if you're one of those that have just been kind of like teetering and tottering and wondering what's going on, check your temperature, stay safe, put your mask on, and make it to the sanctuary on Sunday morning. If, you, if you're that scared, stand at the door. If you're not scared to come inside, stand at the door so you can be close. Ah, to the worship experience. This morning, we're going to, and I just realized that, that, that I posted one scripture, had uh, Jaden post one scripture, and I read another this morning uh, uh, because I was going to read First Peter. But anyway, it all ties into what I'm going to preach about this morning. I, when I was sending that last night, I thought about Psalm 24, then I realized that First Peter may have been a bit closer tied, connected, and so that's what I sent him, but I didn't look at that this morning. The word is the word. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this, we're going to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verses 1 and 2. So then, men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now, now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Or as the King James, the New King James says, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful, that a person be found faithful. Faithful. Amen. Uh, I want to talk about being a faithful steward in difficult times. Amen. Being a faithful steward in difficult times. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes all that you desire. Thank you that you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. Thank you for sending your word to us this morning. Thank you for what your word will accomplish in our lives as we yield to you. Have your way. Be glorified. Anoint me afresh. Anoint us afresh as we hear and receive your word. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Being a faithful steward <coughs> steward in difficult times, difficult times. Over the past few Sundays, we've talked about God's love and concern for us, even down to uh, the very minute things in our lives. And we spoke last Sunday on how much each of us, uh, of how each of us are created uh, with, with uniqueness and the fact that God will use our, unique, our uniqueness to make us noticeable and to uh, bring, bring blessings in our lives in many ways if we will only develop that uniqueness and allow, trust him enough to allow him to, to use us. So we've talked about trusting God. And one day this week, the Lord asked me, can I trust you? You know, we can trust him because he's trustworthy. He's faithful. But can he trust us? And, and, and the, the motivation uh, for this message kind of stemmed out, of course, the Lord stirred my heart in this direction, stemmed out of just, just thinking about those people, well, all of us, but in particular, people that are on the fringes, people who claim Christianity who say that they are servants of the Lord, but there's no evidence in their lives uh, to show that they're servants of the Lord. And not that this is, this is the key thing, uh, but when the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some, that has to speak to our responsibility of 
attending worship, but also supporting the ministry. Uh, so sometimes when you look at, when you look out, even, even before pandemic times, okay, but p the pandemic has, has kind of hurt a lot of people. A lot of people have had spiritual covert, not, not physical covert, spiritual covert, and they suffered from it. And they're, they're suffering the after effect of spiritual covert. They've just fallen by the wayside. But it does not neglect the fact that once you accepted Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, then you became a steward of the Lord. And that's what we have to understand. A lot of times, you know, we think about growing in the Lord and becoming mature and whatever. But no, from the very point that a person receives Christ as Savior and your Lord, they are as their Savior and their Lord, they are immediately uh, dubbed, they are immediately assigned the task of being God's steward. Amen. And God, a steward, the Bible says, must be found faithful must be found faithful. Amen. There are a lot of reasons that we can come up with as to why we are not faithful. But those, those excuses don't make it with the Lord. Amen. It is required. It is required. A requirement is not a suggestion. It's not an option. It is required in a steward that a man must be found faithful. Amen. So we've been placed, we have been placed in the position of being stewards of the Lord. You know, uh, a lot of times people expect the pastor to understand their situation and their circumstances. But you know what? It really doesn't matter if the pastor understands because the pastor is not the judge. Ultimately, you stand before the Lord. Amen. He is the one who made you a steward. I didn't make you a steward. Amen? He's the one who gave you that designation. It is his requirement. So whether the pastor understands your situation or not, it's not the, it's, that's not the important thing. You know, we're looking to human beings for our affirmation or, or our approval or whatever, but we really should be looking to God. Should be looking to God. Amen? So it is required, the Bible says, uh, in a steward that a man be found Faithful. The New International Version, which I read from, uh, recognizes that today uh, a steward is too often associated with a waiter uh, or with a with a uh, 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 well, a waiter on board a ship or whatever at a restaurant. Uh, so the NIV translate this word uh, into those entrusted with secret things. Now, in particular, here Paul is talking about. The gospel and the mysteries of the kingdom of God, okay? Uh, but we, we, want to em, we want to enlarge this word because really it is in the word itself in terms of what it means enlarges this word beyond being entrusted with the mysteries of the gospel. Uh, so the most nearest equivalent today would be a household manager, a, a, a housekeeper, not someone who just cleans the house, but someone who manages the affairs, manages the state of another, okay? Uh, uh, and this, this, this office normally includes the responsibility for overseeing a household budget, purchasing, accounts, resource allocations, collection of debts, and the general running of the establishment, but only as instructed within the guidelines agreed by, by the employer or the head of the house. Okay? All right. So, so then let me just repeat that for if anybody wants to take notes. If you talk about an estate manager, okay, the office normally includes responsibility for overseeing a household budget, uh, purchasing accounts, resource allocation, collection of debts, and general running of the establishment, but only as instructed within the guidelines agreed by the employer or the head of the house. So we see ourselves as God's steward in, in, in the area of responsibility that he has assigned to us, all right, 
Uh, we can't manage the whole world. I can't, I'm not the governor of South Carolina, okay? I'm not the, the governor, I'm not the president of the United States, all right? I'm the pastor of Tabernacle of Praise. I'm the, the head of the Jackson household, the Alfred Jackson household, amen? So my responsibility as a steward, amen, of the Lord, amen, is, 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 is the responsibility for overseeing my household. My budget, my, our purchase and our accounts, our resource allocation, collecting debts, and maybe somebody owes me some money, collecting debts and running and general running of the establishment. More so, I owe other people money. I, I'm, I'm to manage that well. The Bible says, owe no man anything. So, so when, I, when I sign my mortgage statement, that means I need to keep my commitment and pay my mortgage on time. All right. All right? I can't use my mortgage money to go on a vacation. I got to manage it well. I got to manage it well, you know. And, 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 and included in that, included in that is my spiritual responsibility because I am a part of the body of Christ. So I have a responsibility to attend worship. I have a responsibility to support the ministry. I have a responsibility to pray for the saints. For me, as the pastor, I have a responsibility to rightly divide the word of truth, to communicate to you the word as God has given it to me, correctly dividing, not adding anything to it and not taking anything away from it. Amen? Within the guidelines agreed to by the employer or the head of the household, God is the head of the house. Amen? God is the head of our lives, so God has given us requirements. We can't escape those requirements. What happens to you when you don't pay your mortgage? You get evicted. You can say that was, that was my house, but now it's not your house anymore. Amen. You get evicted. What happens to you when, you don't, when you're not a faithful steward of the things of God? And so a lot of people are walking around claiming they're Christians, but they have been evicted by their own doings. Amen. Amen. Are you listening, those of you who are online? I'm not talking to those of you all who are in the sanctuary this morning. <laughs> I'm talking to you all too. But it's, it's, it's much larger than that. You know, so people don't see that, you know. And you meet people all of the time, and they're not fulfilling their responsibility as a steward, but yet they're claiming Christianity. Amen. And some of them even claim to be a member of a particular church. And so consequently, when they, when they get sick, they expect a call from the pastor. When they die, they call the pastor to preach their funeral. Or they don't call it, but the family does. Don't call me. You know, but they are not faithful stewards. Faithful stewards. Amen. Huh. Another theologian that I was reading even enlarged this to get us, and, and I'm doing this so we can get a picture of what this word steward entails and the honor that comes along with being a steward. Uh, another theologian uh, references Romans 16 and 23 as it talks about Erastus as a city treasurer or city administrator. So this, this can be considered to be, or is considered to be a high position, a high position. And people generally entrust things into the hands of that city. Well, not generally. If you're the city treasurer, they entrust the managing of the finances into the hands of that treasurer. It is an honorable position. And we need to see that when we talk about being a steward of the Lord, we're not at the bottom of the totem pole. God has elevated us. God has put us in a position of honor, but many people do not understand that and consequently don't take it seriously or don't see themselves as being God's steward. You can't just be a preacher. You are steward of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You are steward of the things that God has assigned in your area of responsibility. Amen. You can't just see yourself as, as, as a deacon or as a trustee or as a member of the church or as a choir member. You are a steward of the things of God. And as a steward, it is required. It is not optional. It is required in a man, that a man be found faithful. Faithful. I can't be looking for you and I can't find you. Some people have never called me during the pandemic and said, Pastor, 
I'm here, I'm doing this, and I'm doing the other. Some people have never sent me a text. Well, Pastor, you're supposed to look out for us. Well, I come every week. <laughs> Amen. Very seldom do I miss a Sunday. If I miss, you know where I am. Amen. I'm so, 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 so I'm looking for you. I'm looking to hear from you. Amen. I'm looking to see on the financial sheet that you have been given. You've been supporting the ministry. And I don't want this to, to boil down to finances, but sometimes you see what a person's heart is when you look at their pocketbook. It's how people give and how faithful they are in their giving. How faithful they are in their giving. So this refers to a high, high position, a high position. In such a position, the central requirement is that a man be found faithful. Faithful. Amen. Now, now that, 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 there are two nuances to this word that's used here in the scripture. Okay. Faithful. Uh, faithful in the sense of being faithful to the wishes and instructions of the owner of the estate or the employer. Okay? So you're going to go and work for XYZ Corporation, but you're going to, you, 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 you're still trying to be faithful to the other corporation you used to work for. All right? You, you're trying to do things their way. All right? You, you're trying to follow their instructions. Well, this is a different corporation. Okay? Trustworthy. That's, a, that's the other nuance of this. It, trustworthy in the administration of resources which belongs to the employer. Okay? Um, there's not one word that really expresses both of these things. But when you talk about trustworthy, it's like a chemist, amen, in, uh, a, a, like a dispensing chemist who makes up a medical prescription per prescribed by a doctor. The requirement is to do the job as instructed, not to try to make self-devised improvements on one's own. Amen. So most of the time people think, well, you know, my doctor prescribes medicine and then the pharmacist just goes and pulls it. But the chemist has to put all of the ingredients together to make this particular drug. So you don't want the chemist deciding, well, maybe I'll try some of this. Maybe I'll try something. You know, sometimes when I'm cooking, you know, I'll say, oh, I'm going to add this in. I want to see what, how this tastes. Well, I don't want you experimenting on me like that if it comes to medicine. Now, food is a different story, you know. Cause, but, but the wise thing to do is to read and find out what spices go together, what spices mix well together if you want to try something different. All right. But... But the thing about it is that if you're going to prove trustworthy to God, you can't add to God's instructions, nor can you take away from God's instructions. You have to be faithful. You have to be loyal to him, all right, uh, to his wishes, to his instructions. And then you have to prove trustworthy that you don't go in there with your smart self and try to add to God's instructions or take away from his instructions. Amen. God is looking for his steward to be faithful and trustworthy. Amen. So God has, has designated us, followers of Jesus Christ. Are we listening? Every one of us, young and old, you follow Jesus. You've given your life to Jesus. God has designated you as his steward. And the Bible says it is required of a steward that a person is found, let's use the two words, faithful and trustworthy. Faithful and trustworthy. All right. So, uh, and we, we, we prove our trustworthiness by remaining loyal to God. We prove our trustworthiness by being faithful or loyal. That word faithful there is uh, also the synonym is loyal. All right. We prove, I prove my trustworthiness by remaining loyal to God. Amen? Amen. I'm, 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 I'm loyal to his wishes, to, to his instructions, because he is the owner of the estate. I am just a manager. I don't own this world. Amen? Now, you see the connection to the scripture from Psalm, Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Amen. In the text, Paul talks about being faithful and trustworthy as ministers of Christ, handling the mysteries of the gospel. 
uh, being full of faith and handling the business of God that has been assigned to them, amen, but he, we want to, as I said earlier, we, we, we're expanding this to talk about our lives and what God is in, everything that God has entrusted in our hands, amen? Um, when you think about the earth being the Lord's and the fullness thereof, or everything that's in it, what's in the world? First of all, you and me, we're in the world. We're in the, we're in the world. Uh, 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 the, 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 the air, the trees, the resources, the ground, the animals, the minerals, the chemicals, everything that's in this world belongs to God. Amen. Sometimes you look at these people that, that focus a lot of attention on the, on the, on the environment, and we say, well, we don't, we don't need to pay attention to all of that. But as Christians, you know, we should have clean yards. We got clean houses. We should have, you have clean cars. As Christians, we should because we're managing God's resources. Amen. We're managing God's resources. He placed these things in the earth for our benefit. And we're managing what God has placed in our hands. Amen. Let's fast forward. Uh, to, 220, to 2021. Is God expecting you and me to be faithful and trustworthy in managing his affairs and everything in the world today? Yes, yeah. The question is, have we been faithful? Up until this point in 2021, have you been a faithful steward? Have you been a faithful administrator? Have you been a faithful treasurer? Have you been a faithful house manager of God's possessions that he's allowed you to manage? He's entrusted these things into your hands. Have you been faithful? Have you been faithful? Well, well but, but, but Pastor, this, no. Have you been faithful? But, but, no. Have you been faithful? Each of us has to answer that question for ourselves. Because only God and you know and I know whether I have been faithful to the Lord or you've been faithful to the Lord or not. But more so this morning, the question is more to challenge us to become faithful if we have not or to deal with those areas in our lives where we have been slacking. Amen. Amen. You, 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 you may have been... You may have been faithful in your church attendance, but have you been faithful in your giving? You know, and since, since I keep talking about money, I want to talk about it. So I've noticed that, that since the pandemic, that our mission offering in particular has dropped. And I guess because people don't come, they don't feel like they need to give the mission. But people that we've committed to still need to eat. Pastors still need to feed their families. Our orphans still need to be taken care of. You know, and I've noticed that people... People, and, and I'm assuming, because I don't always look at all of the reports, that, 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 that our finances, well, some people have really been faithful and God has added, you know, and people watch us online and they give, but I wonder about those people who are on the fringes. You know, I wonder sometimes about those of us who could come to the sanctuary and worship, but just don't. Just don't. I'm not trying to fill the building. We still have space to spread people out. Yeah, we still have a lot of space to spread people out. I just wonder, have you been faithful? You got to answer that question for yourself. Have you done what you could have done when you could do it? Uh, you know, I used to talk about my Aunt Sadie all of the time. My Aunt Sadie, I love that she was just like my mama. And she used to say to me, she'd say, you know, uh, I just miss going to church because she was com eventually got completely blind and bedridden. She, said, I, she, she was a faithful woman. I mean, faithful to the things of God. The first woman trustee in, in the city of Baltimore, in Baltimore County in Maryland, in the Baptist church. You know, and when they started that ministry, I said it was right in there. She was always, and I was given to get to the point where her health failed. She said, she said I want to go out, but I said, but I said it, what you did you went when you could. You were faithful when you could. And some of us can, but we're not being faithful. I was always reminded of my grandmother telling me the story of one of her sisters who would never attend church. 
Never go, never support. Then she got sick. And she would beg her children to take her and let her sit at the window. They couldn't, back in those days, you know, you didn't have handicapped ramps or what have you. She said, just let me sit at the window and listen to the sermon. But when she could, she wouldn't. Are you understanding? God expects us to be faithful and trustworthy. We, we should not be looking back over our lives after 40, 50, 60 years and regretting that we weren't faithful in the things of God when the Word of God tells us that God requires us as stewards to be faithful. And that's in every area of our lives. Yeah. So, God has entrusted you with a life to live for his glory. Have you been faithful and trustworthy? God has entrusted you with spiritual abilities, spiritual skills, spiritual endowment that we call gifts. Have you been faithful and trustworthy? How, how, how are you using your spiritual gifts? You know, an issue that we've had down through the ages, and we got it right now, is we have people who come to worship who have skills and abilities, and they won't use them for the glory of God. They won't use them to, 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 to work in ministry. They'll use them outside in the world, but when it comes to work in ministry, they won't use them. So now we need, we need a nursery. And my wife, when I was sharing this with my wife the other day, she said, well, I said, no, you don't need to be doing this right now. We have other people who come, other people who can, other people who should take the responsibility so that on Sunday our children don't have to sit in worship, in adult worship, where they could be ministered to in a, in a space alone. And we have the space to do it, but we don't have people who step up to the plate and say, Pastor, I'll do it. And it just didn't start in the pandemic. You know, I don't want to get too direct with this. But, you know, you, you have people that won't step up to the plate, but you're stewards. So then you have a few people who take on a lot of responsibility to see that the ministry goes forward while you come and enjoy service on Sunday. Sit in the pews and do nothing but listen. But you will use your skills and abilities in the schools, in the community. But when it comes to ministry, there's a, there's a problem with that. There's, there's a, and, and, I, and, and, and those of you who are listening online, one day this, this pandemic is going to be such, it's going to be like the flu. You're going to be able to come. All right? You're not going to have this excuse. Because just like the flu, you go where you want to go and you do what you want to do. And take the flu shot. Now, I may be minimizing that a little bit. I know this is a bit more deadly than that. But, but God, God is a keeper. Are you listening? God is a keeper. And if it, it, there are things that happen, but if you do your part in protecting yourself and doing what you're supposed to do, God has kept many of us. Or he's kept all of us, even if you were tested positive, he kept you. Amen. You still here. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So God requires us to be faithful stewards. And it's time for believers to, to latch on to this. You do not have a way out. Amen. You cannot use all of your skills and abilities and talents and money, what have you, in the world and not bring it into ministry. Because we are followers of Jesus Christ. Use it in the world, but use it in ministry. I'm going to go out and start a 501c3 because I don't like the church. And so I'm going to do all my stuff and say, well, I'm a parachurch organization. I don't have to deal with those people in church. There's a problem with people who have an attitude, a negative attitude about fellow believers. There's a serious attitude because the Bible says, serious problem, because the Bible says we are to forbear with one another in love. Amen. Amen. Just like God has mercy on us, just like God has grace and gives you grace in your stinkiness and your dirtiness and your bad attitudes, you have to learn to grace your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. And iron sharpens iron. 
Amen. Sometimes we are going to strike one another. Amen. We're going to offend one another. But we have to learn to forgive so that the body of Christ can move forward. We maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. 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 Yeah. Rest assured that God has positioned you in a place of honor. If you've not been faithful, if you've not been faithful, and, and, and I'm not judging anybody, but this is, as I was praying about this, I started in one direction, the Lord took me to switch it so uh, we can get a different perspective on this, all right? What do you do? How do you get to where you need to be? All right. First of all, yield to the Holy Spirit's illumination, okay? So you're listening to me preach. All right, and as people do, and I've had people tell me, somebody said one time, I don't always agree with what you said. You don't have to agree with me, but as one you have to agree with if you're going to be saved. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yield to his illumination. There's something I learned a long time ago. There's a scripture, and, you, and I probably said this a thousand times if, if I've said it one time. There's a scripture where Paul talks about uh, pressing toward the mark of the, calling of, the, of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And, and he said, let as many of us as are mature have this mind. But if, that, but if you are otherwise minded, God will reveal even this to you. Amen. So, so what Paul is saying is that maybe you don't agree with me. Maybe you don't see it the way the Lord has revealed it to me. But just pray. Don't reject it. Be open to the Holy Spirit's illumination. God will reveal. God will illuminate. God will enlighten. How does God do it? He does it through Holy Spirit. That's what we've been studying. Yield to his illumination. Amen. Don't argue with me. Amen. Just yield to his illumination. And as I yield to his illumination, I could be wrong, but I'm looking to him to enlighten me. Illumination is described as defined in, 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 um, in, in, in the theology book as the process of spiritual enlightenment whereby the Spirit enables you to grasp, to experience, and apply God's truth in your daily Christian life. That's what we need. So we're talking about a truth of God. We're talking about stewardship. We're talking about being a faithful steward. We're talking about being, about being trustworthy. You need, we need illumination by the Holy Spirit so that we can grasp this concept. We may understand it, those who are coming, but there are a lot of people who don't understand it, and they live like they don't understand it. They need to grasp it. They need to experience, experience it, and they need to apply the, this truth in their daily Christian life. Amen. So you got a problem getting this truth? Yield to Holy Spirit's illumination. He will illuminate you. That's his job. That's what he, what he lives inside of you to do. You, know, well, you say, well, the Holy Spirit doesn't live inside of me. Did you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord? Are you an apostate now? You accepted Jesus. So you said the Holy Spirit doesn't live in you. Are you an apostate now? Have you turned away from God? Have you rejected God? So once you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, Holy Spirit comes to live in you and incorporate you into the body of Christ. He indwells you at that moment. You may not be filled at the moment, but he indwells you. It filled mean operating in his power. But he lives in you. And he lives in you to illuminate God's word to you, to bring the truth of God's word to you and allow you to experience, to grasp, to take a hold of it. Amen. To embrace it. Now you can resist him. You can resist him. And people resist him. No, God doesn't force you to do anything. The issue is, are you yielding? Are you surrendering? Do you pray daily, Lord, have your way in my life. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, direct me. Holy Spirit, lead me. 
Are you embracing him and his illumination in your life? As Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, and he talked about let this mind be in you in chapter 2, which is also in Christ Jesus. Down, I think, at, around verse 13, it says, he said, it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. How does God work in us? Holy Spirit. Oh, I feel for churches to do that, that do not elevate. It grieves me for churches that do not elevate, that do not teach, that do not embrace, that do not push the power of Holy Spirit working today. He is not somewhere off sitting up in heaven looking down on us. He is God with us today. <laughs> Jesus said he will be with you and he will be in you. Today, right now, Holy Spirit wants to illuminate you. Don't sit back and say, I don't understand this. I don't understand it. Give yourself to Holy Spirit and allow him to illuminate you. He will do his work. He is faithful. And he is trustworthy. Yeah, yeah. That's his assignment. So if there are things you don't know, if, if you don't understand stewardship, that means then now you should start asking for his illumination. Amen. Even say, excuse me, this is what the early church did. When the apostles taught them, the Bible says they went back and they searched the scriptures daily to see if the things that the apostles told them were the, was the truth. So that's what you need to be doing. I'm not asking you, just take my word for it. You don't ever open your Bible. All of us understand that if you're going to grasp something, you got to read it for yourself. You can't go by what you hear. You have to study this thing. And sometimes when I'm studying, when I'm even preparing for a sermon, I have to read it over and over and over again. Sometimes I have to just step away from it and, and, and just do something else and pray, and pray, Lord, show me what you're saying. Help me to understand this. Amen. Amen. It's God, Holy Spirit, working in us. So if you don't understand this, you are without excuse. That's why whew, a day of accountability is going to come. You will be held accountable. And I'm not saying this to try to scare anybody. I'm just telling you the truth. It's a fair warning. We will be held accountable. We will have to give an account of our stewardship. We will have to give an account of our stewardship. What God has placed in our hands to do, to take care of, the life that God has required us to live, and this is not optional. Once you accepted Jesus Christ, amen, this is not an optional thing. The only thing you can do is just turn away from God, but you will still be held accountable. Maybe I shouldn't say the only thing. You can just be a slacker, but you will still be held accountable. Amen, there's no excuse. Yield to his illumination. Because he wants to illuminate. He wants to teach you these things. He wants to reveal these things to you so that you know how you are supposed to manage God's estate. Then, the other thing we need to do is we need to yield to his conviction. As he illuminates us, he will also convict us. Mm. And we know that that word there is convincing. He will convince you of this truth. That's why Paul said, if you're otherwise minded, that God will reveal even this to you. God will convince you. How many of you God has had to convince of things, spiritual things? Amen. 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 All of us. Amen. Because we don't come in this world knowing God. We're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And we don't get saved and know everything there is to know about God. Amen. We have been brought up in a culture. Amen. We have been brought up in a family. There are ways that have been ingrained in us. Amen? And we think that our way is right because that's the only thing we know. The problem with any culture, when people are not exposed outside of that culture, is that people in that culture think that their culture is the only way that's right. They've never been exposed. Babe, you need to go somewhere. And if you can't get in a car and go buy a book, Read. You need exposure. I used to spend my allowances on my animals and on books. When my daddy would give me money and then we'd take us into town, I would buy a book and I would read. So, you know, I've been to Switzerland, never been there physically, but 
in my mind, I've been to Switzerland because I would read about Switzerland. And now, now, this is what I would read because, you know, Switzerland has a lot of dairy cows, you know, so I like my animals. <laughs> but I would read. And even today, I read. You know, people start telling me about things that go on in other countries, and they think that I, I haven't heard about it. No. I'm, I'm, I'm watching BBC. You know, I'm watching World Africa, uh, uh, Africa Live, you know. I'm just reading, you know, and, I, and I'm reading articles. If I see something pop up on my phone about something, I'm reading because I want to know. I mean, I may not ever get there in my physical body, but I can go there. I can be exposed to other things in the world besides Blair, South Carolina, or York, South Carolina, or Rock Hill, South Carolina. Are you understanding me? A lot of people are not exposed. You live in your community, and that's all you know. And you don't know how to operate outside of, another, outside of this community. I don't know how I got there. Ooh, but that was the message the Lord gave me last Sunday that I didn't preach. That was part of that message. Amen. Amen. You know, anyway, let me, let me get there. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yield to his conviction, to his convincing you. And he does that by exposing you to the truth of the gospel. And he convinces you of things that you thought otherwise because all you know is what you're, that's how I got there. All you know is what you've learned in your family or your culture. God exposes you. He convinces you. He exposes you to him. He exposes you to his presence. He exposes you to his holiness. He exposes you to, to, his, to his righteousness. He exposes you to his love. He exposes you to his peace so that he can convince you that his way is right. That, that's love. God could just leave you. He could just leave us, but he loves us, and he wants us to be like him. He wants us to be faithful as he is faithful. He wants us to be trustworthy as he is trustworthy. Now, in, in this convincing, this Holy Spirit illuminates us and convinces us. It's bringing us to the place where we will confess our sins. Because we are not going to change unless we are convinced and unless we commit ourselves to confessing. And if you studied the lesson last week, you know what that word confessing means. Confess means, basically, to agree with God that he is right and that you're wrong and to do something about it. And not just, you know, how people just come before the church and say, uh, I've sinned, and please forgive me. No, you were doing what the church wanted you to do. Some people were. That's all you were doing. And Lord, forgive me. Uh, well, Lord, help me to say this right. <laughs> because if you go back and you do the same thing over and over and over and over again, there has not been any change. You know, the, 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 the intention for confessing for agreeing that God's standard is right and your standard is wrong is that you're going to do something about this now. You're going to change to follow God's standard. Okay? The Bible says, do not make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. But how many people make provisions for the flesh? Anyway. One of the things that Dr. Evans says in the book that is that confession is an attitude. There's an attitude of confession. My attitude has to be right. So my attitude has to be that, that I want to honor God. That I want to change and I want to walk in the path that God wants me to walk in. My, it starts, an attitude is always in your mind. And the Bible says that we should be, re, be renewed in the spirit of our minds. So we will never change unless we're renewed in the spirit of our mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if, if, if confession is an attitude, it starts in my mind. I got to change my mind. 
Holy Spirit is going to work on my heart. As I yield to him, then he will also begin to deal with my mind. But if I don't ever yield to him and yield my spirit to his spirit, then my mind and my body will always be in control. Yep. So then yield to Holy Spirit's convincing, his illumination that you are a steward of the Lord. You accepted Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. You were put in the position of an estate manager. That estate may just be your little world. How faithful are you? How trustworthy are you? And manage it according to what God has said. As he illuminates you, he will convict you, convict you, or convince you of things that are wrong in your life. All right? I can't convince you. There's no sermon that's preached in the world that can convince you in and of itself. Only Holy Spirit does the convincing. And sometimes we try to force people to change. You can't force anybody to change. Holy Spirit has to bring that change in that person's life. You can't even force yourself to change. Somebody wrote, and I'm missing this on on our minister's call, that you... To break a habit, you do, you do something different for 21 days or something like that, or form a new habit for 21 days. Then they got all of these steps. You know, people make money off these books about, you know, step 21 days for this, steps to a perfect church, all these steps, steps, steps. Let me tell you the step. The step is yielding to the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can go through the steps and never yield to the Holy Spirit, and no change will come in your life. Because he is the change agent. He is the one who transforms us by the renewing of our minds. He fills us with his presence. He lives out the life of God in us. Lastly, lastly, yield to his leading. He will illuminate you. Amen. He will convict you. He will convince you of the things of God being right. And then he's going to lead you into truth. Okay. All of this, all of this takes you beyond the pastor now. Because you may have an issue with me, you know, and you don't want to hear anything I got to say. But the Holy Spirit will speak. Amen? He will speak. So you, 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 you yield to his leading. I know you all don't have an issue with me, but you know, we're dealing with, with church and more people are listening. But you know how many people have issues with their pastors? Some folks just live. They go to church angry, mad. And we've been there before. Folk looking like they want to shoot you while you're preaching. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but it goes beyond us. And what we have to see and what I'm trying to explain to us is that we're just vessels. Amen. We're just messengers. Hear the message. Yield to Holy Spirit. He will do the work. He wants to lead you into all truth. He may use us in the process, but he is the one who's doing the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit will lead the offending believer to repent of the lack of faithfulness and trustworthiness because he wants you back on track. He wants you back to a life that brings glory and honor to God. That life that's back on track that brings glory and honor to God is not just living, quote, unquote, holy, but doing those things that are required of you as a steward. Because as a steward, I have responsibility to more than myself. Okay? He'll lead you to change your ways, to repent. He will. To turn from, to renounce. And repentance means to change, to renounce, to go from the wrong direction to the right direction. Jesus promised this in John chapter 16, verse 13. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So if I want to know the will of God concerning being a steward, I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. You want to know the truth? He's going to guide you into all truth, all of it. And as he guides you, you will understand that the things I'm telling you are the truth. 
There may be some more things added into this about being a steward. And this can apply across the board. But God, God, God this morning is dealing with us about being faithful, trustworthy stewards of the things that he's entrusted in our hands. Through every sermon, we plead and we try to convince people of their error and encourage them to change their ways, whatever those ways are. However, our job is not to convict you or to convince you. Our job is to proclaim the gospel. Holy Spirit does the work of convincing. Holy Spirit does the work of leading you and guiding you into all truth. Make sure you're yielding to the Holy Spirit in your life. Make sure. Make sure you are. And notice he's going to guide you into truth. He's not going to guide you into error. Whatever error that might be. Being faithful to it in these difficult, challenging times, we need Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. Because these are times that we can find a lot of excuses not to do. We can find a lot of excuses not to share the gospel. Oh, we can't talk to people directly. But you do. It's just when it comes to witnessing, now you have an excuse. Think about it. Think about the number of people you encounter every day if you go out of your house. And some of those people you talk to. Think about it. When it comes to your financial resources, think about how you use your finances. Are you faithful? Think about your relationships. Are you faithful? Most of all, are you faithful to God? Are you trustworthy? Think about it. It is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. Think about how you use your time. Think about how you use your resources. Are you trustworthy? God is trustworthy. Are we? That's the question. Are we? Are we? Yes, I will trust him. Can he trust me? We have a responsibility deals with our stewardship. Stewardship cuts across every area of our lives. It's required that we are found faithful. And we are without excuse. This morning, I want to give the invitation to anyone who needs to and wants to give your life to Jesus. More so this morning, maybe an invitation to people who know that you've fallen away from being a faithful steward. You just kind of live life Forget about God, forget about your brothers and sisters in Christ. You live your life, you're doing what you want to do, you're using your finances like you want to use it, you're using your time in the way that you want to use it. It's all about you, and you've forgotten that there's a God who saved you. There's a God who gave his life, his only begotten son, if you want to say it like that, to die on the cross for your sins and my sins, to purchase you. You are a purchased possession. You've been bought with a price, the life and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't belong to yourself. You say, Bishop, that sounds like slavery. Well, if it is, it's the greatest slavery in the world. Jesus said, he that the Son sets free 
free indeed. Free to serve him. Free to live a whole life, a full life, a joy-filled life, a peaceful life, a responsible life. Free to be guided by his spirit. To be the steward that he calls you to be. So if there is anyone today who wants to make a recommitment to being a faithful, trustworthy steward of the Lord, I want to pray for you. And if you're in the, let's just stand in the sanctuary uh, today. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for challenging us, Lord, in our stewardship. You called us to be faithful. You said it's required that you're found faithful as your stewards. And as followers of Jesus, we understand that all of us have the designation, have the responsibility to be a steward. There have been times and ways, Lord, that we've fallen, that we've not been faithful, that we've not been trustworthy. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our iniquities. Forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, today we make the commitment to become faithful and trustworthy stewards of all of the things that you've given us, responsibilities that you've laid in our hands. We thank you for your help. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your convincing, Lord. Thank you for your illumination. Thank you for, even as the word was going forth today, how you spoke to our hearts. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We recommit ourselves to being the faithful, trustworthy stewards that you called us to be. We want to see your kingdom advanced. We want to see people blessed. And we want to be used by you in the process. Thank you for this word today. We say yes to your will. Yes to your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are an unbeliever and you've never accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, we want to give you that opportunity, even as you're watching online today, to pray the prayer of confession. We ask you, if you will, to write to us and let us know of the decision that you've made so that we can follow up with you and help you in this growth process. So if, amen, thank you. I see you. Amen. We have one person who said they want to rededicate. She wants to rededicate her life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That rededication is the prayer that we just prayed. That's what we just finished praying for all of us as we recommit ourselves to being the faithful and wise steward of the Lord. The Bible says if we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Take the Lord at his word. We will follow up with you as you're watching. Uh, we will follow up with you uh, and pray specifically with you. For the unbeliever, for the unbeliever today, if you've never accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Lord, but I believe that you died on the cross. You gave your life in my place. You were my substitute. You took the punishment that I deserved for my sin. Lord Jesus, I accept your sacrifice. Thank you. Lord, come into my life. Save me from my sin. I give my life to you today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. I know that was a simple prayer, but if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says as many 
has received him, to them he gave the right to become his sons and his daughters. If you prayed that prayer to accept Christ as Savior and Lord, the Lord has accepted you. That's what he said in this word. We want you to write to us so that we can follow up with you. And we can help you begin this growth process and continue this growth process so that you can grow in the Lord. If you don't live in this area, we will work with you to help you find a church in your area where you can connect to and begin growing uh, further in the Lord. Thank you all so much for being here this morning. It's good to see all of your faces. Good to see so many people this morning. Like I said, there's still room. We can separate these chairs some more, and we can, we can even move in the narthex and move outside if more people want to come. Amen. We'll put a speaker on the outside of the door. And you sit right back there and sit back to the fence. You can see my face. So just come. Get out of your houses and come with your mask on. Amen. You need, you need the fellowship of believers. We still have to be safe. We still have to protect people. All right. But you need to be here. Or you need to make sure that you're watching. And don't just watch. Take notes. Join the Bible study classes Wednesday at 7, online. Thursday, if you're a young adult, on Thursday night via Zoom. Today at 2 o'clock, on Sundays at 2 for teenagers. Join one of those classes. Maybe you can't, maybe you're 50 and you can't get on on Wednesday night. Brother Jonathan doesn't care if you join on Thursday night. The, the important thing is to get the word. If you join the youth class, just join, just don't take over. Amen. Minister Simon doesn't care. You need the word. Amen. It's going to help you grow and know that you are a steward of the Lord. Let's receive the benediction. Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word that does not return to you empty, but accomplishes what you desire. Thank you for prospering your word in the things that you sent your word to. Now as we prepare to depart the sanctuary, we know that we will never depart your presence. Thank you for your indwelling presence. Thank you, Lord. Be with us. Guide us. Keep us. Use us for your glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you.